In this video, we're gonna be looking at this device here, the MiU Mini Plus. This is a retro handheld emulator and it came out a couple of months ago and it's become pretty popular actually. So in this video, we're gonna have a closer look at the MiU Mini Plus. And we're gonna try and work out why everyone is buying this device. So let's start off by having a look in the box. So the unboxing experience of this device is pretty standard. Inside the box, you're greeted with some instructions and then the device itself in a little packet. The MiU Mini Plus also comes with a USB-C cable, but no charging brick. It also includes a micro SD card to USB adapter. So this should make loading games onto this device from your computer a lot easier. And finally, it actually comes with a tempered glass screen protector, which is very nice to see. So you can pop this on your MiU Mini to prevent scratches on the screen. So what actually is the MiU Mini Plus? Well, essentially it's a small, Game Boy looking device that emulates older games. So on this device, you'll be able to play a lot of older titles, ranging from Game Boy to DS to PlayStation 1. So before we carry on looking at the MiU Mini Plus, if you are enjoying this video so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 3000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. So if you're interested in tech and game console related content, then check out my channel and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get on with the video. So here it is, the MiU Mini Plus. I'm someone that's never had a retro handheld game console. This is my first one. So if you've been looking for a retro handheld game console, then you probably realize that there are a lot of different models out there. So why did I go with the MiU Mini Plus? First of all, I do like the design. I think it looks like a Game Boy. I quite like the fact that the controls are below the screen. Um, it does make it look very retro. It is different to some other devices such as the Steam Deck where all the buttons are either side of the display. So I guess the main reason I chose this was because of the design. And it's also fairly small and portable, which is another factor. So in terms of price, I paid about 60 pounds for this device. And this is the 64 gigabyte variant. There is a 32 and 128 variant, but it doesn't really matter which version you go for because I think the storage is just a micro SD card that you can change anyway. On the website, they quote 6,000 games on this one device and you are able to load more games onto this device just by adding them to the SD card. In terms of performance, the MiU Mini Plus isn't actually that impressive compared to the competition. It comes with a dual core 1.2 gigahertz Cortex processor, 128 megabytes of RAM, and it doesn't come with a dedicated GPU. Whereas on the other hand, many similar looking devices from other companies such as Ambernic come with quad core processors and dedicated GPUs. So definitely compared to the competition, this is one of the weaker handheld emulators, but performance isn't everything. What do the specs of the MiU Mini Plus actually let you do? Well, this device will play all the way up to PlayStation 1 games. So essentially any game console that's less powerful than a PlayStation 1, this should be able to handle. So now we're gonna have a look at the design and ergonomics of this MiU Mini Plus. So in terms of design, as you can see, it looks like it was inspired by a Game Boy. It's a vertical gaming device, which is, as I said, one of the main reasons I picked this up. And the device is actually quite a nice size. You can easily fit this in your pocket. Um, or you could fit it wherever, I don't know where you'd wanna put this. As you can see here, I've got my Google Pixel 7 Pro, which is quite a large smartphone. The width is about the same size. Obviously the smartphone is a lot taller. The overall build quality of this device feels fairly decent. The plastic doesn't feel like it's gonna break straight away. The chassis doesn't creak if you try and twist it. It's actually, it's actually fairly nicely put together, which is always a good thing. So we're now gonna go and have a closer look at the MiU Mini Plus. We're gonna have a look at the external design of this device. We're then going to have a look at the software and play some games. So how is this device laid out? So on the top we have an LED so that means it's on standby mode. So the only button on the top is the power button. It's quite hard to see. You press it once and it wakes the device up. You can press it again to turn it off or put it in standby mode. On the right hand side there is nothing. So moving on to the bottom of the device there is a three and a half mil headphone jack, a micro SD card slot for loading games onto and then to charge the device you have a USB-C port. On the left hand side of the device all there is is a volume rocker. On the back of this device you've got some bumper buttons. For most games these don't do anything but these are programmable to whatever you want. And then interestingly on the back there is a compartment that houses the rechargeable battery. This device comes with a 3000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. And then on the front of this device there is a d-pad, a select button, a start button, then you've got some colored buttons, a B, an A, a Y, and an X. Then up here in the middle, there's an unlabeled button, but this essentially acts as a menu button. 
So when you're in a game, you can press it and it will give you the ability to exit the game. So we're now gonna take a quick look at the user interface of this device. So we're gonna wake up the device with the power button and you're greeted with this menu here. I don't know if you can hear it, but the default theme actually has some menu music. I'm gonna hold it up to my microphone. Can you hear that? So what do we have on the home menu? We've got recent, which will show you your recently played games. Um, so if there's a game you play quite frequently, it's a quite a quick way to get back to that game. You can also add your favorite games to this favorite game folder. And then moving along, there is a game tab. So if you click on that, all the games on this device are sorted by console. So you can uh, choose which console you want to emulate. So there's actually a bunch of retro game consoles that you can emulate. Now of the box, there are loads of games. So if we go on PlayStation 1, um, there's 24 games from the PlayStation 1. Um, but if you go all the way up to Game Boy Advanced, there's 1,457 games pre-installed, which is a huge number. So moving back to the main menu, there's another tab called Retro Arc. And essentially, I think this allows you to play arcade games, which is pretty cool. And then there's an apps folder. Um, I'm not sure what any of these apps do. And finally, there is a settings button, so you can press that and it gives you various different options. So let's test out a couple of the games on this device. So let's go on the PlayStation 1. Should we try Tekken 2? I actually suck at this. So it's probably going to vary game on game, but my initial impressions, especially of this Tekken 2, is it's actually running really well on this device. I didn't notice any drop frames or any visual bugs, and the audio seems to be in sync with the, uh, the gameplay, which is good. Let's try a Game Boy Advanced game. Let's try Driver 2 Advance. This is also another game that I've never played before, but let's give it a go. So this game's running all right. Obviously, it's the resolution of the Game Boy Advance, which is a lot lower than the resolution of this device, so it does look quite pixelated, but that's to be expected. Oh, it's crashed. So it looks like that game crashed, and I did, I don't know if you heard, but there was a slight crackling in the audio, so I don't know if it ran that game particularly well. It might be because this device is about to run out of battery, so I'm gonna plug it in, see if that helps anything. Let's give Lego Racers 2 a go, see how that runs. So the previous game might have just crashed because the Mii Mini might have been low on battery. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But this is actually running really well. Oh, what did I press there? So yeah, this is running at definitely 100% speed. Um, and I've just realized one of the back triggers, you can press that and it actually fast forwards the game. That's really cool. So in terms of the screen on this device, it's okay. It's not something that's blown me away. It's it's a three and a half inch 640 by 480p IPS display. And the colors on this display are okay. They seem pretty accurate, but they're not very vibrant. It's nothing like an OLED. And something else that I've noticed is the brightness of this display isn't amazing. So I'm just gonna hold it next to my Google Pixel. As you can see, the display on full brightness is not that bright. Another thing that I have noticed is the viewing angles are not the best. Um, but if I was to rate the screen, I'd probably give it like a 5 or 6 out of 10. It's okay. It does its job. It's fairly high resolution for the size. Um, it's just not that bright and vibrant. So in terms of battery life, as I mentioned, this has a 3000 mAh battery, which is fairly decent for the size of this device. So I would say, depending on what game you're playing, you could get around about four to five hours of screen on time, which is pretty decent from a handheld this size. But there are a few things to keep in mind. I have noticed that this battery indicator in the corner isn't the most accurate thing, so I wouldn't fully rely on it. I have had it show that it has about 25% battery left, but then dying about five, 10 minutes later. Another thing that I've noticed, as I mentioned, if you short press the power button, it puts it into a sleep mode. When the device is in the sleep mode, it actually does sip on quite a bit of power so if you have this device I wouldn't rely on putting it in sleep mode um, because if you put it in sleep mode it'll probably be dead by the next day. So in conclusion should you pick up the Miu Mini Plus? So in my opinion the Miu Mini Plus is a decent device so it does tick a lot of the boxes in terms of vertical, handheld, portable, retro gaming emulator. That was a mouthful. So first of all do I think this is a good device? Yeah it 
kind of does what it set out to do. So for the price, it's actually a fairly decent retro emulator. I don't really have many issues with it. So if you're in the market for a retro handheld emulator, the only thing that's stopping me from kind of flat out recommending this device is the fact there is a lot of other competition. So companies like Ambernic make a device called the RG35XX, which is another device that looks fairly similar to this. And I personally haven't actually tested any other retro handheld devices, so I can't really comment on the other ones. Um, but to be honest, in my opinion, I think this is a decent device. And if it looks like it does what you want it to do, then I'd probably recommend going and getting one of these. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have enjoyed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and, and consider dropping a like. We're going to try and aim for 30 likes in this video and I will see everyone in my next video.